hugely downplay the work that has happened over the past few decades. So for SAMHSA, I know you're in the middle of your strategic plan, and this is your 20th anniversary. What is the part that SAMHSA has to play in South African story? Um, well, if you look at where the country is, firstly, we cannot extricate ourselves from the country's fortunes or misfortunes. We are part of South Africa. That part that works within the maritime sector. Our very foundation um, had pointed us in that direction because the maritime sector had to carry the country's aspirations because we are a country that is far removed from its international trading partners whether it is to take our trade there or to go fetch what we want to import from there. And so at the core of the country has to be the ability for the maritime industry to really ensure a sustainable economy. Now, SAMSA then gets envisaged in that context to say that you've got 3,000 kilometers of a coastline um, you've got um, all eight ports, etc. 250 um, miles for exclusive economic zone. What it is that you do there? And um, firstly, if you are a coastal state, there are obligations internationally that you must um, do because you're part of a common heritage that is called the World Oceans. Okay. And that um, part there is to ensure that the oceans remain sustainable um, in terms of um, ensuring the protection of lives at sea mm -hmm. as well as ensuring the protection of the environment. Mm -hmm. But the understanding has always been that those things come at a cost and as a balance then, there has always been a need that the countries then derive the economic benefit out of the part that they are required to play. So here is us trying to explain this thing to the 55 million South Africans to say you've got this coastline mm -hmm. and there is a new dawn. What does that coastline, what is the link between the coastline and the dawn that is beginning to, 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 to emerge for us? Now we see employment there. We see a lot of economic activity. We see a lot of sustainability for our country, whether it's renewable energies, mm -hmm. whether it is on transportation, whether it is um, supplying the markets that are far removed and um, serving as a halfway station. Mm -hmm. So we are in the midst there of making sense of all of that. And by the way, that project has started some seven, eight years ago mm -hmm. and continues to run. And, and so it is just one milestone that we have to stop and look at. So how else do we add value? I must say that um, back then, remember, we had run our maritime economy so down that it was fully foreign controlled. We had no ships transporting our cargoes. Mm -hmm. Our um, seafarer registry had, uh, had been on a decline for over a very long period of time. And, and so when we looked at the options that we needed to do, was that as you reposition South Africa as an international maritime center and trying to make South Africa a significant player in maritime terms, it was important for us to have a very long-term strategy and then um, see what short-term goals we had. And so we began by saying, firstly, for this to grow, you need the skills that will supply it. And there we went, took part in the Human Resource Development Council, which, by the way, was headed ultimately by the current president, who was a deputy president okay. at the time. Wow. We commissioned a report there on maritime sector skills. Mm -hmm. I was chair of the task team that was looking into mm -hmm. issues relating to those tasks, uh, to, to the maritime sector skills. Mm -hmm. Now, once we had done that, we had understood what blockages we needed to deal with. 
and we produced a report and that report then we took it to Operation Pakisa mm -hmm. to say that what are these things that we need to do in regards to skills development um, and then we segmented the industry into five subsectors that's fishing, um, oil and gas, mm -hmm. transport, manufacturing and tourism and um, so once we then had a, 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 in an outline for the architecture of the industry, then it helped for us to say where are those skills that we're going to have to develop. Now we chose initially seafaring skills mm -hmm. and the reason we did that is that initially there had been, there still is a reported shortage of seafarers. If you go to the BIMCO report, um, the earlier reports around 2012 or so told us that there was going to be a huge shortage of seafarers. And uh, even the latest report, much as the economy slowed right down, mm -hmm. it still shows shortages on specialized areas. Mm -hmm. So that is exactly where we are then pointed our first effort to say we shall develop the skills. Mm -hmm. And then we commissioned one vessel the training vessel, we call it the Akalas. It was a retired mm -hmm. uh, polar research vessel that we took over, converted. Yes. And um, within that, we have produced in excess of 1,000 seafarers now since oh, wow. inception. Since every year was since inception. 2012, okay. or 2011 to be exact. Wow. And uh, our seafarer registry has been growing quite gradually. So. The one area we managed to arrest is the declining skills. Um, if anything, um, we're starting that upward tra trajectory again. And so from a skills development point of view, mm -hmm. such has been our interpretation of the new dawn. We're trying to accelerate that. And then part of the other initiatives that we did was if you look at the transportation itself, mm -hmm. as a country in 2013-14, we had 320 million tons of import and exports. Now that number stayed more or less the same, and we do not have the numbers for, for the last two years, but I would imagine it's approximately 300 million tons again. Mm -hmm. Now. If you look at that, a huge percentage, about more than half actually, 170 million tons, is dry bulk cargoes. Okay. Now, that is iron ore coming out of Saldana Bay, that is manganese ore coming out of Port Elizabeth um, as ports, that is uh, coal coming out of Richards Bay and Devon, and a fair amount of some of the other phosphates also coming out of Richards Bay. Mm -hmm. Now, those are cargoes that arise when government issues mining licenses to mining companies. Mm -hmm. Now, as part of Operation Pakisa, we were saying that if it is government controlling the issue of the mining licenses, within our ability to dictate or to influence the terms of trade, you know, we should be able to, 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 to be able to call for cost including freight where those transportation is concerned. Because if we did that, then we would be able to have to arrange for our own transportation and that's where shipping comes in. Now, what we then did because we needed to sort our legislative environment. Mm -hmm. um, South Africa as a flag had a difficulty because our taxation was not competitive enough mm -hmm. if you compare to other flags. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we had the Deputy Minister, in fact I had this conversation an hour ago with the gentleman that owns the company, mm -hmm. where the Deputy Minister of transport meeting the Deputy Minister of Treasury, who is now the Minister of Treasury. And um, we were trying to see how can we get to be competitive as a country from a taxation regime. 
And all those efforts led to one very big um, shift in taxation because we managed to get for the shipping industry a complete tax exemption for those ships that are operating internationally. Oh wow, okay. So, um, and in fact, um, we had compared ourselves to Singapore mm -hmm. because we consider it as one of the best flags to benchmark. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so our, I can safely say that our taxation yeah. is no less efficient than Singapore's now. Amazing. And um, so, so that gave us then a very good start to be able to say, we will push cargo owners, which are mining companies, mm -hmm. to allocate more cargoes towards South African ships, whilst not making them uncompetitive. Because the most important thing is that as we South Africanize, and it is uh, one of our cardinal rules, mm -hmm. we are not going to be less competitive. Mm -hmm. Because it is not going to be less competitive because it's South Africa. Yeah. And that is what we've safeguarded against. Mm -hmm. It has its pros and cons. We've tended to move slower than we would have loved to. Mm -hmm. Because then, um, if you want to work on your value proposition, it takes that much longer. We've had problems in that um, we, we still do not have banking institutions that trust in the South African flag. Mm -hmm. So all the international funders mm -hmm. have tended to walk with caution when it comes to having their money linked to the South African flag. Okay. Which is a problem for us. Mm -hmm. Because on one hand, as a country, we are regarded as a country with a very strong legal and judicial system, yeah, yeah. which then should mean that if you put your investment in South African hands, it should be adequately protected. Of course, yeah. So it is one issue that we are still grappling with, mm -hmm. but it's a marketing issue now, not a legislative issue. And um, so the second part then to your answer, to answer your question, mm -hmm. how is this new dawn being um, made sense of by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are running ahead with getting more tonnage carried by South African ships. In fact, in two days' time, I've got a function with Anglo um, shipping because um, they gave us, they gave the South African company cargo that allowed them to go and purchase their first two ships. So we've got ships on the registry, on the registry now. So that is how far we've come in regards to shipping. Mm -hmm. And then we said then, looked and said, but the halfway station that we are should give us a bit more advantage. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at South Africa, and the reason we went to the map outside, and we didn't get to that detail, where we are, if you go from east to west, mm -hmm. um, carrying the bulk of the trade that can go through the Suez Canal and can go through the Pacific and Panama Canal, yeah. um, we are exactly 21, 22 days away from China. Mm -hmm. And at this point, you generally need supplies, whether it is fuel or victualings or anything of mm -hmm. sorts. Now, if you come from west to east, same thing. There's a lot of iron ore that leaves Brazil to go to China. Yeah. Those ships have been on at sea for 22 days. Yeah. There's quite a few ships that leave um, 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 the, 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 the east coast of um, North America to go to China. Mm -hmm. Again, um, they've been on the, on the at sea for a similar number of days. So we then decided to make ourselves a halfway station. The halfway station that we were when the first settlers landed in 1652. Yes. And um, out of that then, we interpreted that we needed a refueling station out of um, Algoa Bay, Port Elizabeth. Mm -hmm.